What's going on, good people? Welcome back to another episode of the Bison Trading Show, coming at you live from the Bison Trading Labs. If you don't know, man, this is our live market analysis session where we break down all of the hottest charts that you need to keep your eyes on. We tell you what levels you need to look for and how to maneuver around those levels so that you can make some profits this week. If you don't know, I'm half of the Bison Trading Show crew. I go by the name of Ty Trades Futures, and of course, I'm here with my guy. The one and only, I'm the D-Guy, a.k.a. Pro Financial. Man, I hope you guys have your notebooks and your pens, because we're going to be going over some different stuff tonight. I hope you guys are ready. We're going to dip a little bit into the, to the options market, but I don't want to give too much away. So let me just cut the small talk, and let's just hop right on in. Let's do it. All right. So... With our first, well, actually, before we get started, don't forget, tomorrow, you guys already know what's going on, man. Tomorrow, 9, 10 a.m., well, 9, 15 a.m., mm -hmm. Eastern Standard Time, we will be here Friday morning putting together everything that we learned throughout this week in a, a very comprehensive live trading session, so make sure you pull up and catch the guys trading live. You know it. I'm definitely All right. in attendance. Definitely. Make sure y'all pull up. So with that being said, man, let's go ahead and get straight into our analysis. I have two pairs for you tonight. Tonight I have, you already know if you've been on the stream before, US 30 and Dollar Swiss. So let's go ahead and start off with uh, US 30. We'll look at the weekly chart real quick. We looked at this on Tuesday, so we really just want to kind of see if anything has changed. I think on Tuesday, this candle wasn't as big as it was right now. Now, if we look at what's going on here, we actually have two long tail candle wicks, which is a good thing because a long tail candle wick like this usually means that we have higher prices coming in the future. So to see two of those candles get formed right next to each other back to back on a weekly chart is very nice to see. And then to see those two candles followed by this bullish movement to the upside is something that we like because we know... The Dow Jones is in an overall uptrend, so we should expect those types of movements to continue to happen all day, every day, week in and week out. So that brings us back to the daily. Now, on Tuesday, we, we brought up the 50 moving average, and we were talking about how when things went down this way, it got a little bit hectic. But then, as the Dow Jones always does, somehow it found a way to bounce back. We ended up making a double bottom right off of that 50 moving average, just as we touched it before. And from that point forward, we moved higher. I told you guys on Tuesday, we needed to break the apex of the double bottom. We have done that. We have closed above the apex for the double bottom. I told you on Tuesday, once we break that, the uptrend is confirmed and we can start to look for our long trades. So that brings us to where we are today. So let's go ahead and break it down to the hourly chart to see exactly how we want to enter this trade and look for our up moves. So we know the one thing we never want to do is buy at higher prices. As we can see on the hourly chart, we're not at the highest prices that we've ever made. But in terms of what we've done recently, we're at the highest points, at least for today so far. So that's not an area you ever want to buy from. Don't buy at the daily high. It's just a a very risk, a very risk heavy type of strategy. And we don't want you to do that. So what you want to do is you want to wait for prices to come back to lower levels. That's why in the market, you always hear buy low, sell high. We want to use that same concept when we're trading. Now, one thing that we also tell you guys about a lot is the breakout retest trade. Whenever you have a level of supply or resistance above that refuses to get broken through, and then you finally see a break, you want to expect prices to come back, pull back to that area, retest it, see a higher low, and then you go long and start looking for your trade. So if we bring up our support and resistance levels, we can see this double top that we were talking about all last week and on Tuesday. We said that was the price we needed to see breakout from. We saw the breakout, right? The first initial one, we also had a false breakout, came back, retested it. So this is actually the real breakout, this most recent push to the upside. So all we need to do is see prices come back, maybe retest 34,500 or retest 34,525. Once we see prices bounce from those levels and create a higher low, 
that will give us all of the information that we need in order to feel like we can take this trade up to the long side. So for me, the levels I'm watching are 500 and 525. Of course, 34,000. 500, 34,525. Wait, 34,525. Uh, let's check out the... Well, say that again. 34,000... 500. And then 34,525. 500, 34,525, okay. And I would say those are the best orders to get, to get in from, but the way this market is moving, we could potentially see prices just come back to what used to be the tops of these bodies right here at 575. Now that's a little bit aggressive, so y'all can y'all can take that level down too, but understand that level is a lot more risky than 500 and 525. So just keep that in mind, but that's definitely a level that we should look for too. And those are the three levels that I have. I'm looking for the long trades right now. In terms of the short side, there's not much I can say that really supports it. Because even on a daily chart, look at what's going on. We have our double bottom. Remember on a couple strings back, I told you guys, when you see a double bottom, the first thing you want to see is a higher low coming out of it. What do we have right here? We have our higher low. So right now, I'm not even considering the short. I'm all long on US 30 for the moment. So hopefully tomorrow will be a very nice update and we can see all of these levels come into the play. So with that being said, that wraps up my analysis for US 30 right now. So let's pass it over to Darren and let's get his thoughts on this one. All right. First things first, go back to, to the hourly and then hide the signals again. I think it was like the two hour. But I just want to say the way you drew, yeah, here it is. The way you drew that zone was absolutely great. I'm just so uh, you proud, <laughs> man. Like, you you did such a great job, man. I thought you was me for a second. I'm like, oh, oh really? All right, so. Huh? So I'm like, man, my boy, yo, my boy really taking, I mean, taking the sauce and applying the sauce. It's never taking the sauce, guys. My boy's just applying it, you know? Anything that's mine is his. You know what I mean? So. With that being said, let's get back to the real analysis. I just wanted to applaud you on that, my boy Tiberius, man. I'm proud of you, my boy. All right, so now let's take um, let's hide the signals and let's do our top down analysis. Because, like Tiberius said, we never want to uh, just assume everything's the same. You just want to make sure you dotting your eyes and crossing your T's for the most part. So. For this one, like we said, it's it's an up movement. Nothing is really out of place, out of order. The 20 is above the 50. It broke the high, the most previous high. It came back down and retested. So that those two red candles were the retest. And it now looks, no, you had it right. So it came up, formed that high, and it formed those lows, those two red candles, uh, wicks. And then now we have the green candle. I'm not sure. Were there were those two red wicks there the last time? On Tuesday, did you see those two red wicks? Yep. That's crazy. I know this is a weekly candle. Nothing could, could nothing has changed from the last time we seen this chart on Tuesday. So it seems like I didn't really notice or see. It's just now. I don't know why it's sticking out to me more now, but it's cool. Um, we got the high was broken. We can't. We retest the previous high, and now it looks like we're pushing up. So let's drop down to the. Um, daily. Oh no, go to the monthly. That's why I said wait. Go to the monthly first. I must say wait a minute. I just want to you know make sure everything's up. The candle just pulled back. Everything is pretty much the same. I just want everybody to just at least put your eyes on this time frame just to make sure everything is everything. We looked at the monthly. We looked at the weekly. Both uh twenty were above the fifty and the highs were broken. So let's now drop that back down to the daily. So the daily, so like we said, we st everything is now aligned. By the time we get down to the daily, we should have our assumption on where we're going. Um, whether it's buy or sell, in this case, the 20 is above the 50 in all three higher time frames. Um, the market looks like it has re bounced right off of the 20 moving average and now has gone up. I know the last area last week that I wrote down that we needed to look at was 34375 so where is that at? Drop down to the four hour. 
So like Tiberius said, we're only looking for buys at the current moment. So that was actually, so probably that long candle was the one that that uh, broke it. What date was that? What time was that when that candle formed? This is the four hour candle. I mean, four hour chart. So it should be within yesterday or today. Six o'clock. Six today. o'clock. So actually that uh candle move just broke that um area we were looking for the mark that we expected that the market need to break so go to go over on which candle starts on tuesday the 25th go to the 25th yes so on the 25th we were saying that in order for us to even go long we would need that area right there to be broken. But in fact, we I think me and Tybers, I think we're even considering um, waiting for the buy to set up for us to hop in, and which it did. So, and I think kind of look, look where the market pulled back down to. I don't know if I kind of said, uh, you see those two wicks, of, those two candlestick wicks over here? Those tweezing up, keep going over, keep going over. Keep going, keep going, keep going right there. So those two wicks right there, I don't know if I pointed those out, but I was like, some about those two wicks stood out to me, and I felt that the market was going to come down to that low and then make its way up, which, in fact, it did. It came right down to that area, those two tweezer uh, tops perfectly, and then it now it went to go up. What is the price on top of that uh red and green candle over the by the twenty seventh? Oh no, no no I'm sorry. Go go to the middle one or the twenty fourth, I'm sorry. In the middle. Right there. What price is that? Thirty four five hundred. Okay, so we actually got the break of the thirty four five hundred we were saying that we wanted the market to break 34, 375. Where's that 300, 375 again? So we would have got in on the break of that, um, which was a great move. We're still in profit right now. So now that the market has broken that high over to the left, we would now have to expect the market to come back down to retest the previous high in which it broken at 34, 500. So I think that uh, two areas I want to kind of focus on. I want to focus on the thirty-four five hundred, and I want to focus on what's the price at the twenty moving average. Thirty-four four hundred. And to the very, very, you know, would be my ultimate great spot to get in would be, would be down at the uh, 50 moving average. What price is that? Two, 250. 34, 250. That's um, a price in which I that obviously would be great, even though it's already been hit. The likelihood of it coming back down just to, to test that particular um, low and high again to me the ratio is low so I'm gonna go more with the uh, the 34 500 um, and the 34 400 so point out the 34 level and the uh, the 34 500 and the 34 400 level for me right quick so that's the 34 500 where I'm expecting it to come down to to continue up because we got it broken or the 34400 that area right there so and actually before I could kind of conclude go to the five minute because I want to see how high is high and how low is low so yeah um put the cursor where that gap is Uh, so in in ways that that gap was not filled, correct? Was that gap filled? Can you hear me? Hold on, bro.
What happened? Hold on, man. Oh, man. Stay with us, guys. We may be having some technical difficulties. Just stay with Is us. That we, you good? Yep. All right. So, uh, that gap, do you, in your opinion, do you think that that gap was uh, filled? Uh, it depends because this is it's a couple gaps. You got one right here, and then you got another one right here. I think that one right there was definitely filled. I'm talking about the other one. I don't think the other one, one was technically filled. No, yeah, that one, that one, that one. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Do you no, think it wasn't filled? It wasn't filled, yet. right? Uh, it came back to test it because the gap. Put a, put, right a, here, put a put a put a little zone put a little zone in that little gap area, and double zero it. And I just you know, and I want to see how much of that other side is hitting it. Is it in the market in the joint just a little bit or? Hmm. So and that price is thirty four. What a uh, five fifty. No, five eighty and five seventy five. Okay, so. And I said the thirty four five hundred thirty four four hundred. So and yeah, so, I in that uh, little zone two, I actually I'm gonna write that price. And what's the bottom of it? Get thirty four what? Uh, 34, 575. So actually that, like that area is very, very risky. Like Tiberia said, um, which I don't feel is a good suggestion because we're only going for high p probability trades. So to conclude my analysis, the two areas that I'm looking for the market to come to. So go to the 15, the two markets that I'm, uh, prices I'm looking for the market to come to is right around the 34, 500. And the thirty four four hundred. Yep, so those are the two areas that I'm looking for the market to come to so we can take the market back up again. And that is my analysis. All right. So we should see some of those levels come into play tomorrow. So make sure you guys are there at nine fifteen AM Eastern Standard Time, same place. You know where to find us. And that actually brings us to our next pair, good old dollar Swiss, which has actually hit some of the levels that we talked about on Tuesday. So we'll break that down right now and see how we can play that going forward into the future. Because Ty Trey's futures. Duh. <laughs> Duh. So, well, of course, let's start with our top-down analysis. We know that the trend is down. You remember our analysis from Tuesday, we talked about how market has been in a downtrend since 2019. It's fallen from a dollar all the way down to 88 cents, been making lower lows and lower highs for the past two years. So that sets us up for the scenario that we're looking at right now and kind of helps us understand why we're seeing such a violent down move off of the up move that started at the beginning of the year that looks so promising. We're probably wondering, like, why did it just turn around and have like eight straight weeks where it went down because the overall trend is down. So with that being said, that means that we need to look for our last lows and start figuring out how we can get trades off of those levels. So if we look at the chart where we're at right now and we zoom in, we can find our last low if we look to the left. And we can find that around this area right around here, kind of where we're at right now between 89.75 and around 90 cents. So far, that has been our last low area or our last low zone. Prices have failed to break above that area, so the sellers are still in control. So as people leaning towards the sell, as traders leaning towards the sell side, all we have to do is wait for some type of bearish reversal or bearish activity, bearish candlestick patterns, bearish price activity uh, before we get in. Once we see that, that pretty much gives us our confirmation. Now, the first thing that I see that gives me a bearish signal is this long tail candle wick 
that close on the lower end. I believe this is called a hammer, but I'm not really big on the candlestick names. I just know what they look like. So I call this one a long tail candle wick. Whenever you see something like this, it usually indicates that sellers are strong in the market. Because what this candle represents, notice how the high is all the way up here. It tells you that the buyers initially pushed this candle all the way back up where the last low used to be. But then the sellers came right back in and said, uh-uh, y'all had y'all move, but we're going to close it down here. And then if you see continuous another red candle after you see that long tail candle wick, that means that the sellers have completely taken over the market and you should start to look for your short trades. So right now, if we look at the daily chart, we can actually see that where we're at right now is still above the open for the last candle. So it's not quite uh, guaranteed that we should be short quite yet. Only, only off by a few pips, but those few pips make a big difference. You don't want to hop in too early for that confirmation. You always want to wait until you get concrete information. So I want to talk about that 90 cents level that we covered on Tuesday. I told you guys that I told you guys that in the best case scenario, we would be able to catch prices off of 90, right? And prices came back up. They were able to hit that today, actually, at 9 o'clock. So if you guys were able to catch that, make sure you drop it in the chat. Let us know if you're still in the trade or if you took profit, how much you made. And we saw prices bounce off of that level. And let's talk about why they bounce. We know that 90 cents is a major psychological level, major whole number level, especially for the dollar Swiss. And also, we know that it's been a major level since way back 2014, 2015. So it just makes sense that if we want to short, that'll probably be the best area. Now that prices have kind of come back to that area, I would say maybe if you get a chance, you can hop in again. But you don't really want to take too many chances in the market. Most of the time, you get one opportunity to hop in, the market moves without you. The second or the third time you see that setup happen, you might think, oh, yeah, that's my setup. But nah, your setup passed. Now when it's coming into it, it's going against you. You got to catch it the first time, not the third time. So I would kind of, I would be a little bit cautious about going short at 90. We just need to wait for the sell move to kind of shake itself out. So I would say, I usually don't say this, but right now where we're at, we're at the top of the zone. So I would actually say that this is the best price right now. I wouldn't short it though, because we haven't had any bearish candlestick formations. Notice how we came off the bottom of the zone. All green candles. You never want to short going into all green candles. I don't care what supply zone gets hit or what resistance level gets hit. Don't step in front of the moving train. Wait for the train to slow down before you start trying to push it back the other way. So I would say right now, I like where we're at, 89.75. But we just need that one confirmation to the bear side, to the downside before we hop in but overall man i'm definitely looking for the short trades on dollar swiss just being a little bit patient because right now like i said on dollar swiss how you don't want to buy at the highs well right now on dollar well as i said on us 30 you don't want to buy at the highs. on dollar swiss it's the opposite we're towards the lower part of the chart we don't want to sell down here we want to wait for prices to pop back up so Honestly, if we didn't get that trade at the 90 cents level from earlier this morning, we pretty much just got to wait for the next wait for the next sell move. So until then, we'll keep our bias on the sell side, but we'll be patient and wait for the best opportunity because it's not just enough to know the direction of the market. You also have to have good time. So on that note, man, that wraps up my analysis. Let's pass it over to Darren. Let's get his take on it. All right. All right. So you say you were looking for buys or you were looking for sales in this one, right? Yep. All right. So, just saying off that, um, the two levels that I had written down that I wanted to look at was uh, that ninety cents level and eighty nine seven fifty. Eighty nine seven fifty. Oh yeah, that's where we're at right now. That's where we at right now. Okay, so those are the two areas I was looking out for to hop in for the short. Um, like Tiberia said, if we didn't pretty much catch it at the 90 cents level, I think. Um, and so pretty much if you didn't catch it at the 90 cents level and not plan on hopping on it right, right, right now, then I feel like you would pretty much have to wait for the next um, so-called retestment. 
to come back up in order to take it back all the way down to the bottom of structure. So with that being said, let's just really look, let's really look and see what the market has going on. So let's go ahead and go to the monthly and hide everything but my moving averages. So pretty much like Tiberius said, he's been watching this pair for a long time. I know you guys always uh, hear us always say that, but it's really true. Um, this pattern just tends to go, it's lately been, it tends to been going down. And it's something about that. At first it was something about that dollar level. And now it seems like it's something about that 90 cents level where they're just really just playing around and can't really just find that momentum to break it. So right now just right off the eye we see the market has broken down below the moving averages came back up touched the 20 and it looks like it's now coming down so the 20 is now below the 50 which shows us that the bears are in control um let's go over to the weekly weekly kind of like the same thing um but it just really looks like we really got that well no not this this is a weekly chart so yeah like we got the market to come up over the moving averages, and now it looks like it has come down back, down over the moving averages. But look where the market pulled back up to, though. It pulled up exactly to that low area. That's pretty funny, right? So that lets you know how powerful um, knowing that duality level, because if we follow that price all the way over, that market is very, very familiar with that particular price. Something about that particular price has the market's eye um, we don't really know what it is but whatever it is the market doesn't really like that uh, price too much and it doesn't spend a lot of time at that area so the 20 I mean the, yeah the 20 is below the 50 so let's now drop down to the daily <laughs> okay and like I said by the time we get to the daily we should already have our entire decision on which direction we're going whether it's buy or sell in this case it's a sell um we got the market to break down over the moving averages and where they crossed and i think it's, i tried to point out like how the crosses had uh right there at that particular price so it looks like the market had no intention on going back to that area so but i know it, maybe let's say five times out of the ten that it that price got hit again so let's just say, hey, it may get hit again, but maybe not right now. So with that being said, the short is the direction we're looking to go. So let's unhide the signals and let's drop down to the two hour. Let's see. Let's look at this thing and see where we could possibly hop in at. So, yeah, the way Tiberius has that beautiful, beautiful zone, by the way. It's just really amazing. I don't know where he got that from, but whoever taught him that, I swear... Boy, that man, that man is a great, great man. So, <coughs> so uh, like Tiberius said, if you're pretty much not trying to kind of hop in right now, I kind of feel like you might want to just be patient and wait for prices to either come back up to that 90 cents level or go go to where, what price is that? Um, so follow the 90 cents level and I'll, t and t I'll tell you when to stop. Right there. Oh. Here, go back a little bit. One more. All right, right there. So now go down to the top of the bodies. What price is that? 89.88. So 89.88 is one of the levels. I think if it doesn't come back up to the 90 cents, so 90 cents is definitely one of the levels we're looking to uh, utilize tomorrow. And I feel like that price right there, 89.75. Oh no, 89.88. And 89.88 are to me would be the best uh, possible areas for us sellers to want to hop in for the market. Because like we said, we want to buy low, sell high. We would never want to sell something very, very low. We're in this to make money. We're not in this to get anything out for free. So um, that level and that level, uh, I feel like even with this kind of where we are right now, if it doesn't have enough momentum to even reach those two, I think the area of the top of that purple box will be just as sufficient as well. So, um, 
And how many pips it, it, is it from the 89, 88 to the bottom of the structure? About 50. About 50? So, yeah, I think 50 um, pips is a good... You can definitely hop in that market and get, like, a good 25 out of that 50. You know what I mean? You don't have to be greedy. Um... Go bring it to the daily again. I want to see uh, where can we possibly take the profit at. Okay, so we could just probably take it to the bot to the top of those wicks down there at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, top of the bodies or the bottom of the bottom of those lows down there. Yeah. So yeah, those would be kind of like my areas I would possibly want to take it to. Um, and what price is that at the top of the wicks? At the top, we have 89.20. And then at the bottom, we have 88.50. All right, so yeah, guys, that's another area you should probably write down to to have in mind to, to take profit because, trust, I, I think I was telling my friend this the other day, like, the thing about trading is like, yeah, you can definitely have it go your way, but you have to have a destination. You can't really just hop into the market and just think it's going to forever go down. and You're just going to be forever just making money because you have it going down. You have to have a goal set in mind to where it's you're making money and you hop out of the market. Because once it comes down and touch that price, it may not have spent no time at all down at that price. It may come down there, hit it one time. And now it's probably about to shoot up. And then now you're stuck in the trade because you were thinking that it was forever going to come down and you were just going to forever be making money. So always have that destination in mind. So um, let me see. What's another good price? Go to the uh, go to the 15 minute. I want to see how high is high and how low is low. Yeah. All right, so to wrap up my um, analysis, the two prices that I'm looking to hop into would be the 90 cents area, 89.75 and 89.88. And the destination that I'm planning to take this is somewhere around the 89.20 and the 89, no, excuse me, 88.50. So that's pretty much my destination in mind, and that's pretty much my wrap-up analysis for uh, Dollar Swiss. All right. And, and just to quickly piggyback off of what Darren was saying earlier about taking profits, that's so true. Because I think as traders, just as humans in general, we have a tendency to be overly optimistic. Like, ooh, I'm going to catch 100 pips out of this trade. But you already up by 30, 35 pips. It's coming into market structure. And you saying, nah, I'm going to keep holding it. Man, one thing I learned this week in particular was you just got to take your profits when they get to structure. Forget about how far you think they can run. Just when you see structure, cash out. Nobody ever went broke by cashing out. Never, never. But I back a name. At least a thousand people that went broke because they didn't take the profit. Mm hmm. So. And then that hurts the worst because you had it. It, it came it right to your level and went to your. It, everything that you said it was going to happen happened. Yep. But you fumbled it because you just did not take the profit. I know that's that's a bad day. Talk yep. about a bad day. Like you was up. You you hit that that two thousand dollar mark even though it's not about the money but you got your fifty pips. And then instead of just saying, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and just take this right on out. You thought it was going to go 200 more pips. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's so crazy just to think about. Like, But yeah, so pretty much, you know, I'm not going to hold up anymore. I know I have two pairs that, oh, wait, before I do that, I didn't want to cut that berry. So do you have anything else to say, my boy? That was no, bad, I just want to make sure y'all focus on that because that's so important. Take your profits as structure. All right. So I know for me, I had two pairs that I also wanted to go over tonight. Um, and I know, like I said, I don't want to uh, veer away from 
um, the important things like me listing the areas. So hold on right quick. There's something wrong with my job. Hold on right quick, all right? All right. The chart does not lie, y'all. Structure is there for a reason. We got to use it, man. Don't ignore that. Use it to your advantage. Read the chart for what it is, not for what you want it to be. All right. And just like that, I'm back. All right. So we're definitely going to pop right open. Where is my screen? All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. All right. So. The first pair I want to go over is my trusty handy dandy AU. I don't know why I've been sticking with AU, but AU is, has you know has really grown on me, and I've come to learn its market structure, so to say. So that's probably why I'm trading a little bit more. But let me make this screen bigger. All right. So like we said, we always want to do the top-down analysis. Um, kind of look at it bare. So the first thing, like we said, we kind of noticed that, you know, it's ever since we were here, it's been making lower lows and lower highs, lower lows and lower highs. We came down to this low area all the way down here at the bottom. And I think that's where, other than this area down here, this was the next lowest area of all time. It came down to the all time low and it's just been shooting up. From here, it's been making a higher high, higher low. And right here, we're just kind of consolidating. This is a higher high, and this is somewhat of a higher low. So we should be kind of anticipating maybe either another push back down to go up, or maybe not even have that, that momentum, and it might just shoot up. But it looks like it's really just respecting the 65 moving average. So we want to keep our eyes peeled on what's going to happen here. Let's drop down to the weekly. So the weekly here is kind of like the same thing, but oh wait, let me just go back here to the monthly real quick and hide the moving averages. I unhide the moving averages because I, I think I had yeah this little like blueprint or kind of like a map on where I'm kind of seeing the market to go. So let's drop down to the weekly. So kind of what we're looking at here, what we're looking at right here is pretty much what's been going on right here. We got a high here, which has gotten broken. We had a high here that just recently got broken. We had a big, strong, huge push up to form somewhat like a candle, but like a high area. And then it came down to retest that low. So in this case, we had a high here, had a high up here, came back down to this low. Had another high here, came back down to this low and just been respecting it. So now, we've got, now we're making our way up now. One or two things can either happen. We're either going to come back down and retest this low, which it did two or three times, or we're going to get the market to come back up to this high. But either way, we want to keep our eyes kind of open. Um, so the 20 is above the 65 on this one. On the monthly, the 20 is below. Excuse me, I see it's 20. The 7 is below the 65. And... Like I told you guys, based on my, my trading experience, when the monthly is usually showing one direction and the weekly and daily is showing two other directions, and when I say directions, the positioning of the moving averages, whether it's above or below, um, it's in, in, a consolidation, in, a, in a consolidation period, which means it's currently just going against the market trend just for a temporary time, just to pull back to either come fulfill some orders that were placed that never got in place and the market came back to grab them. Um, so let's hop down to the daily. So the daily lines up with the weekly and it's showing that the 20 is above the 50 and then higher highs and higher lows were formed, but it's still stuck in a consolidation area. So just with that said, it looks like, okay, so it looks like we I made this little wedge thing. It came up to hit the top, came down, hit the bottom. We shot all the way out of it. We needed a retest, which we didn't get a retest here. It actually broke this structure to come back down. And now we got, looks like we have a push up 
to that high. So I think right now, um, I would have to kind of to lean on the short, and I say the short just so we can set up for a long its original direction. Because in my opinion, I feel like the overall trend is still down. I still feel like it's down just because these highs were never broken and no higher highs and higher lows have been formed to tell me that we're in a buying phase. So being that these highs were not broken and it looks like it pretty much respected this entire area, when I go down to the daily, that pretty much tells me why ever since we came up to and made this high here, it broke this structure right here. We were supposed to either respect this top or respect this top here. But this candle was so strong that it actually broke that structure. And now being that we broke that structure, we got the retest like, are you sure you want to go down? And we got two yeses, one yes here and another yes here. And with that right there, that's pretty much telling me why I want you to take it back down to these lower strong demand zones so people and traders like me would want to hop in for the buy. So currently right now, I would have to kind of stick on the side of the, the sell for right now. Um, I know the two areas that I had was 77... Three seven, and that was the area we were planning to buy. Yeah, we were planning to buy right here, and I think this was was this what what date was um Tuesday? I think the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Okay, so yeah, we were looking. This was actually uh, Tuesday's candle. We were actually looking for the market to pretty much come back, pretty much, uh, excuse me, pretty much shoot back up because once we came down here and pretty much came down to a lower area where m the market had struggled, we thought it was going to respect this area and then continue to go up. But to me, I think this candle is still so strong and it hasn't found enough momentum to uh to go and break the other direction so if this candle probably wasn't so long this market probably would have had enough momentum to try to break up but being that we got this structure to be broken we got the retest of that structure and now it looks like it's trying to be pushed down so uh so for me, I would be kind of looking for um, prices just to come just back up just a little bit. But for some reason, like I said, which kind of which I may have to change my decision and may have to stay out on this one. And the reason I say I may have to stay out on this one is because ever came ever since it came down and touched this overall low. We just been making higher highs and higher lows, right? And that's even showing on the monthly. But we, when we just look, when we look at currently or close to days where we were in the in the current right now, we've been making higher highs and higher lows. We haven't broken this high yet, to me, which means that higher higher low doesn't really mean much. Because it's really not a, a super high or a breaking the the previous all-time high. Not all-time high, but a high area the market is near. So two things. I just feel like for some reason I I might want to stay to the side because I, I'm also thinking about the buy still. And the reason I'm thinking about the buy still is because we're down at prices or down at an area in which the market doesn't stay down for very long. So if the so if the price if this market could come back down into this green zone and stay above this stay within the green zone don't break out of it, I would have to go for the long. But if this market breaks this green zone, I would have to bring it back down to the top of this red zone. So pretty much um I for the overall long distance I wanted to go long. 
to go to to continue to go up. That's where I wanted to play. But I feel like being that the moving averages are not lining up, we still we possibly could still be in a retracement area. But I feel like the retracement area, and I think that retracement area might be over. Yeah, and it might be over. And I think, like I said, I think we were looking for the buy, which we did on Tuesday. This was the 25th. The market respect the screen box, came back up, hit a high, found an area of support, and shot back down and hit the green box again. But ever since then, it, it, it couldn't really, no bodies of the candles were able to even come close to the bottom of the, the, the green box. So I think right now, I'm just going to stay on the side of the buys. And the prices that I'm looking to to keep my eyes peeled for is 37.380. Hold on. Where's my pen? Where's my pen go that fast? So the price that I'm looking for is $77,380. The bottom of the green box, which is And I'm pretty much trying to take it back up to 78 up here or even back up to just this red zone. But I'm very optimistic and I feel like the only reason why I'm not looking at the sell anymore is because we're down at lower prices in which the market struggled at. Like we're we're sitting on, on top, we're standing on top of a very of the uh demand box or demand zone. And when people have demand, they buy, 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 buy. So if it wasn't so close to a demand zone, I would think about shorting it, but I feel like it's been just dancing on this uh, demand box, and, and it doesn't really look like it has any intentions on going down, especially after this double bottom. And it looks like it's trying. the market is trying to break over this seven moving average. So in, to conclude... The two areas I'm looking for is 77,380 and 77,250. And I'm planning to take it to 78,800, uh, 78 flat. I'm either planning to take it for TP, 78 flat. Or 78,4. Um, is there anything else I need to say before I pass it over to you? No. Um, I just feel like, and even if I was to short it, I would only probably take it one down to the top of the green box or back down to the bottom of the structure. Either way, it's not even, even if I was to go all the way to the bottom of the green box, it's not even 20 pips. So in my personal opinion, I feel like um, that short wouldn't even be worth me taking, and I feel like the short move is over, especially if I didn't even get it, if I didn't get it from up here. And lastly, if we sell, we never want to sell low. Like we said, if we're going to want, if we're going to sell something, it should be at a higher area or a higher positioning. Like it shouldn't be down at the bottom of a of a of a figure. So where we are right now would be at more of an area where you would want to buy instead of sell. So if we didn't get it, if we didn't hop in at 77,550, then I feel like to me the sell move is pretty much dead. And it's not even worth trying to chase under 20 pips. So that's pretty much my analysis, Ty. I know <laughs> you have a couple things to say, so let me pass it over to you. All right. So with AU, man, let's go back to that daily chart. I saw something that really kind of stood out to me, and it looked like a false breakout. So I want to verify and see if that's actually true. So let's keep all the lines up on the chart this time. Oh, keep all the lines At up? At least, yeah, for right now. Because my analysis is based off of the wedge that you drew. So 
we see that prices initially broke out of the wedge at the beginning of May and they ran up to that price of 79 cents. And they also ran through the top of that red zone that's kind of overlaid on top of the purple. Now, notice how the prices, they really only stay above that trend line for one, two, three candles. And even on those three candles that they were above it, only one of them were green. So for the majority of the time that this pair was actually above the breakout area, it wasn't showing too many signs of actually being concrete and showing any signs that the bulls wanted to, wanted to continue the movement upward. And that's why you see that huge drop to the downside on the other side of that breakout, because there weren't enough buyers in the market to support that move to the upside. It was a lot of impulsive moves at, at first, but nobody wanted to follow up. And the seller stepped back in and they took back over. Now, I think that's also important because if you look at the, the top of that zone at 79 cents, that long tail candle wick, we talked about that a little bit earlier in the session. That long tail candle wick usually indicates that a downtrend is coming. Now, when you have a long tail candle wick like that, lining up with a major level of support, I mean, a major level of resistance, we're at the top of the zone. You talking about this one right here, bro? That gives you even, yep, that gives you even twice the amount of selling pressure that you would usually have. Because you have short, short sellers that are coming into the market shorting because prices are at that zone and then you have, have short sellers that are coming into the market shorting the market because they saw that long tail candle wick and then you have all of the momentum traders that come in after you see that big huge candle to the downside so to me that kind of indicates that for right now sellers have a little bit of strength and also if you notice after that large move to the downside we came back up made a lower high and then we move back down to the support level. So if you follow the prices down across the top, the highs are getting lower, but the bottom is kind of holding out as support. That right there is a descending wedge or a descending triangle, however you want to call it. Basically, it means that it's kind of like the wedge formation where prices are going to go up and down and up and down until they can't squeeze anymore. And eventually they have to pop and they have to break either to the upside or the downside. Now, based on what we're seeing right now, we know that the overall trend is up on the daily, but it's short on the monthly. And we know that on the weekly and the daily, the chart is up. So more than likely, we would probably see prices go long if they was able to if they were able ever able to come back to the bottom of support structure down at 75.50 towards the bottom. Because that's where prices have kind of been holding up as support, and we've been we've been seeing demand down there before. Well, you said seventy five. So 50? I feel like it. Yep. Seventy five so fifty I, is. Where is seventy five fifty? Hold on. Right there, at the the lowest the lowest zone. Seventy five five hundred. Okay. So that area right there. So go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so. Hello. So if prices are coming back down to that level, that's initially where we want to potentially look for the long trade. So if we're looking at where we're at right now, we're seeing that sellers are kind of taking over right now and they have the potential to push the market down to that level. So I believe that, first of all, we have to see the levels that we're at right now, 77, get broken. But because we haven't seen that, I would say that right now, the analysis that I just gave would be better for the long term. But in the short term, until we break 77 or break above 78, is really not too much movement to be had because we're really in a consolidation zone. So for me, I would be a little bit patient and wait for a break above 78 before I even consider the long or a break below 77 well, before I consider the trade all the way back down to 75.50. You said the break of 77. 77's right. So, okay, so the break of 77 or the break of 78. Got you. Got you. Got you. So that's pretty much it for you? Yep. All right, guys, there you have it. Oh, let me grab my notebook. Hold on.
I wanted to make sure I was I wanted to list the next areas because the next uh pair that I'm doing tonight is gold. Gold to me, like I said, has also been another pair has that has grown on me. Um, the two areas that we were looking to kind of watch on gold was was gold. One, did I write down for gold? I don't think I wrote nothing down for gold. What gem was this one? Eighty nine five. No, so it wasn't this one. Okay, so I think for this one. We were kind of, what was Tuesday? Tuesday was the 25th. So I think, yeah, ultimately we were we were looking for the buy move. Um, and we said this was pretty much kind of the retest. And then we were just pretty much kind of looking for the market to go up. Um, but it looks like we did get that push up. But it looks like we definitely found support very quickly. Just at the top of this green zone in which I formed. So let's look at it from a top-down analysis. And kind of see where that zone and why that zone came to be. So when we see the zone, uh, the, this chart, we pretty much see that the market has, you know, made a high at the top up here. And it looks like the market has came back down to this so-called flag structure or resistance or this low here, which was previous. And it looks like it just shot up from that area. And actually... Where I drew that zone was actually perfect because this, like I said, this was the previous high before any of this formed. This was a high area. Came down perfectly. So this 7 is above the 65. Let us know the bulls are in control. We made this high area. Where did this high area come from? Oh, so pretty much this high area has indicated the overall high that highest had ever been in history. So this was another area too. So this would once this gets broken up here, this is going to be very uh, important day because we're then going to be in uncharted territory, and these are going to be some of the highs we're going to be looking for the market to come back down to the test before it starts to go into areas we are just unfamiliar with. So for right now, just based off the wedge, we got that respect, got back up. Looks like we're pushing through the wedge. And now, like I said, if we're breaking through a wedge or a area of support, we usually look for the market to come back down and retest it. So just with that being said, buys for right now. Weekly, you kind of see the same thing. But it looks like I put another zone here to kind of show its high area in which pretty much before this high was made, this was an overall high in this section. So, and look where the market bounced right off of, right exactly off that high. So this market or this particular pair loves to come down to its previous high area um, and before it continues to go in its direction, whether it's up or down, it comes back to its duality level. So um, we were still in that little green zone. And I think that green zone was pretty much this high over to the left. Yep, so this was the the previous uh last well, we're gonna say monthly the previous all-time high of the monthly chart that's what this zone is and we're just we're pretty much came and retest that top area so one or two things can either happen and we're gonna either come back up to retest the top of that box um and then come down or we're just gonna either just continue to push back up come down to retest this area in which it broke and then we're gonna come back up to try to get this retest of the overall high it's ever made so right now we're still in the direction of buys. So yeah, so this is the weekly. This was the uh, last, the monthly last previous all time high. We haven't broken it yet, but it looks like it's coming up, touched that top of it, and it's now pulling back. So we can we're just looking for the market to either come back down to retest this high area in which it broke up broke out of slash the downtrend line um, and then go up. But if it has a strong push movement all the way back down here, then we can see the market possibly push back down to come back down to this blue line. But as of right now, we're still looking for buys. We never buy at an all-time high. And even though this is not the all-time high right here, this is an all-time, like a high area. These are the all-time highs, but I mean like, being that this is such a high type of area, you don't want to buy here. So 
we were trying to buy down at a lower area so we can capitalize on all the pips that are in the middle. Daily kind of shows, you know, it's playing at that top area. And like we said, this top of this green box is the high of the overall, uh, excuse me, the monthly previous all-time high. So the top of this box, that's the previous month's all-time high. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but you guys kind of know what I mean. Um, so like I said, we're looking for the market to either come back down to this green line or this green box before it continues to go back up. And this actually, this high right here lines up with the seven moving average. And if we follow this price all the way over, we're in Wix or another duality level where these highs was once a previous low. So we have to take heed of that. And I feel like to me, in my honest opinion, I feel like something like this is going to happen where we came up, touched a previous high area in which the market was at. This particular area was, the, when we go to the monthly, <clears throat> previous all-time high. So I think even being that we're at previous all-time highs, I think it's only right for the market to come down to re either retest this green line. Um, and I think this green line, seven moving average, is kind of like the same thing or the green box. So with that said, um, we're looking for buys, but like we said, we never ever buy at highs. We want the market to come down, so let's... Uh, so the price prices that I'm kind of looking to go into is so first let me put a little so first area would be oh my god hold on that's my computer freezing sorry guys okay here we go so. The first price that I'm looking for the market to come back down to to find some resistance is the 187. One, 1888.25. 1888.25. So for gold, I'm looking for 1888.75. That's the first. Second is this area at the green line where this low lines up with this high. And that's the price of 1875 flat. Let me go to the four hour real quick. And I think it's something about this this uh, high area here where it's sitting on the 65 excuse me the downtrend line um and maybe i would kind of kind of exclude this area <clears throat> this area for a pullback because when we got this break broke out of here the market came down to retest it not only once twice but we even got like a third and fourth time before it, it started to go up so just these two's area, the, the 1888, 1888.50, I mean, 1888.50 or the 1875 flat. And I'm looking for the market to continue up. Let me see, is there anything else I need to say before I pass it over to Ty? And like I said, I'm not looking for the market to come back down to the downtrend line because it looks like to me the market has retested that. It did its due diligence. It broke out of the that wedge, so to say, that was made. It came down to retest it four times, and now it's just going about its business. And I can't ask the market to do much more than what I thought it was going to do. It did what it did, and it kept going. And that's pretty much my analysis. Ty, tell me what you're thinking, bro. All right, so let's look at this from the daily chart perspective. All right, so one thing I see, I see that if we go back to August of 2020, we made the all-time high at 2050, and from that point forward, we had lower lows and lower highs all the way back down until March of this year. But we made our double bottom, we made our higher low, 
And from that point forward, we've been in a pretty good uptrend. We crossed back above the 7 and the 65 moving averages. So that tells us that the buyers right now, they are in control. Now, because of those things, you have to automatically lean towards the buyer. As Dee stated earlier, we're coming up into a major level of resistance and a major supply zone. So in an uptrend, when you run into supply zones like that, usually the trend continues. But first, it has to pull back. So not only are we coming into a major level of supply, but we're also coming into a major psychological level at 1900. People are going to have a whole lot of sell orders at that level, whether they're trying to short the market or they're trying to take profits. A sale is a sale. So that's why you have to look for the pullback at these levels. As we always say, you want to buy low and sell high. So you want to look and try and find areas on the chart that you can go long from. And of course, as we stated earlier, you look for what used to be previous highs. So for us on this chart right now, that would be 1875 and that will also be 1860. Now, on a stream a couple of weeks back, we were talking about that 1875 level being resistance. So now that it's gotten broken through, it only makes sense that what used to be resistance now comes back and acts as support. And we should be able to see prices bounce off of that level if the demand is there. So if we see that bounce and we see prices break back above 1880, get back into 1885, maybe 1890, that could be the confirmation that we need to go long into that 1900 if you want to be conservative or if you want to be aggressive, maybe hold it longer than that. So overall, I think gold is setting up for uh, a nice up move in a long, long term. But right now we could potentially pull back because we're running into, into the supply zone. All right. There you guys have it. Analysis. So like we said, we're going to either wait for prices to pull back into lower prices so we can take it longer. That's what we're planning to do. We want prices to come back down into lower prices before we take it longer. And like we said, if it doesn't, I think Ty would agree, if we can't get the market to come back down and break the bottom of this green box, box or these lows down here, we wouldn't even think begin to think about the short. So, um, I mean, you can take the short down to the green line or the green box. I don't even say the, <clears throat> I don't even think the green line. I mean, the green box. I just, just think the green line, and I don't even think that that is even worth taking a short. And then you'll be kind of fighting the tri fighting the trend. I mean, that's not even 1%. Is it 1%? That's 1%. So it's less than 1%. So I feel like that's not even worth taking for a short. I feel like the real short probably wouldn't happen unless we got the broke of this bottom of this green box or even the 65 moving average. Would Ty, would you agree? Yep. I agree. All right. So that would be our, our, before we even think about the short, but we're all in for the buy. And that's pretty much my analysis for, so to recap the two levels, um, I'm looking for 88, 1888.75, excuse me, 1888.50, 1888.60, 1888.80, and 1875 flat. So 18... 80, eight, excuse me, 1888, that's what I meant to say, 1888, so I'm looking somewhere either here, or 1875 for the very lowest, so anywhere between, I think pretty much anywhere but into that green box would be valid enough to take it to go long again. But like I said, we'll just put it right here. Just because of this high over here too. Stretch it up just a little bit. So I'm pretty sure, and this is how, how big is this box? So you have nearly 1% group of prices you can hop into which would be valid enough to hop in for the buy. But like but like you said, if you hop in, the sooner you hop in and it pulls against you, you're going to have some resistance. So really try to get as low and as down to 1875 as possible. So 1875 should be more of a better zone. Or matter of fact, let's put it like this. 
right here would be more of a valley box to get it to come down here and then to shoot up. And we would not be looking to hop in for any sales unless it came down here and it even broke the 65 moving average. So with that being said, I think the one thing I want to kind of go over tonight. Oh, before I say that, let's now move into another uh, part of our show, which we added called the exploration section. This is another section that has uh, definitely grown on me because this gives us a chance to open the doors and show you guys what this financial market has to offer. I know every Tuesday and Thursday we only talk about Forex and those areas and the Forex news, but the financial market has so much more to offer. It has stocks, it has options, it has ETFs, NTFs, all type of financial vehicles that I want us to be able to give to the people out there to make money, man, because this knowledge right here is one of those things. It's like riding a bike. Once you learn it, it's like riding a bike and it's like you want to give kind of give back this knowledge that you have. That's what life is all about, giving the knowledge. So with that being said, I think the one thing I want to go over tonight is options. I don't know if you guys know or familiar with options, but you know, options are pretty much a contract that from an owner that holds a particular financial vehicle, whether it's stock, um, for even Forex, futures, and this uh, particular financial vehicle has a price and a expiration date. This expiration date is pretty much a date that's given to you once you purchase this vehicle. It, you have a, a, a date in which you have to kind of like cash in your, your investment. Um, so pretty much it says contract that conveys its owner, the holder to write the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell any underlying asset or instrument as a specified, uh, strike price. Like I said, oh, oh yeah. So, and you're given a particular price that is called the strike price prior to the, or specific date, depending on the form of the option. Um, and pretty much one of the things I think I want you guys to know is pretty much like what is an option. An option is pretty much, and there's two types of options. There's a call and a put. And the one thing, I, at least for me, I learned is that with options, it's pretty much like a way you buy the financial market. And the way is either a call or a put. A call is pretty much when you're expecting it to, or you're expecting, you're ex pretty much expecting it to go, I think it's pretty much to go down. No, to go up. Yep. Up. A call option contract gives the owners the right to purchase 100 shares of a specified security at a specified price within a specified time, planning for it to go up. An option, a put option, is pretty much a contract given to the owner of 100 shares of a specified security at a specified price within a specified time, which you're thinking is going to go down. So just how us Forex people, we buy or sell. It's pretty much the same for this one. So calls will pretty pretty much be your buys, and your puts will pretty much be your sells. And you kind of just use those things in, in which you want the market to go. So like, say if you opened your Robinhood and you had, you were trading options or you were in your options platform. If you wanted to press to uh, do a buy, you would think the market to go, to do a buy. You would press the call button, and that's just literally how simple it is. And you would literally press a uh, to go down, you will put the buy button or put the put button. Another good thing I want you guys to know is to even know what it even looks like. Uh, this is pretty much if you was to see it somewhere, whether it's on a piece of paper, on your computer screen or whatever. I know everything is so digitalized. This is more of like the old school when you went into your financial advisor or whatever and he pulled out a piece of paper and pretty much say if you bought, you know, I think the example we'll go over tonight is Apple. Apple would actually be here. This will be your Apple sign. So I think the Apple sign is APL. Um, this date right here is the date in which the option expires. So you pretty much have to cash it in before this date. Um, this is pretty much the and how what the strike price. Uh, that's the strike price for the stock. So the stock will change hands at $70 if the option is exercised. Um, and this is pretty much, you know, let you know what, whether it's a call or a put, whether you're buying or selling. In this case scenario, this person is wanted to, wanted it to go up. 
and this will be the price <clears throat> and this will be the price per stock or per ETF or per future that you're buying each stock in that contract because it's pretty much going to be a contract laid out um, on what it is. Um, let's see right here. A stock option is the right to buy a specified number of shares of a company stock at a preset price known as the exercise price or the stock or the strike price for a fixed period of time, usually following the predetermined waiting period called the vesting period. Most vesting periods span from three to five years within a certain percentage of options invested. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I think, um, let me see what the strike price is. The strike price, hold on. Oh, and- That's 70. Huh? No, I know that. I was saying, yeah, this was a strike price right here. I was. I think that was one of the things I did. I forgot to put in. What was a what was the strike price? So I think pretty much the. I'm not really too sure what the strike price is, but I know that. Uh, with a option, it's pretty much a way in which you kind of like maneuver the market, like, um, and yeah, that's pretty much what I know on um, options. Ty, kind of spit some game and what you know about options. All right, so when it comes to options, you want to use these for a few different purposes in the market. You can use options either for speculation or you can use it for hedging. So I'll talk about what both of those are really quick and run that by you. So also, before we start, make sure you guys bring up your charts and go over to Apple. Apple ticker symbol AAPL. Pull up that chart because that's what we'll be going over and referencing back and forth tonight. So in terms of options, you have speculation and you have hedging. Speculation is when you straight out are just saying, look, Apple's price is at 125 right now. I think it'll go to back up to the top of structure at 135 before whatever time period. So then you say, okay, based on that, I want to buy an option. Speculation means that you're buying something just to make money from it. That's it. You have an idea and you want to capitalize on it. So that's speculation. And that applies to both calls and puts. Now, you also have another part called hedging. And hedging can only be done once you're already a speculator and you have a position open. So say if you had shares of Apple, like you bought 100 shares of the stock, not from an option, but just on a regular stock exchange, right? So now you have exposure to Apple. You are a speculator. In order to protect your risk, like say if you thought the stock would go down, you would say, okay, I need to hedge my position. So in order to hedge, you just buy something that's the opposite of whatever position you have on. So if you're long Apple, you buy something that decreases in value, I mean that increases in value as the stock price goes down, aka a put option. So you take the opposite side of your trade and you can use options to kind of help you manage your risk. And tonight what I want to do is I want to go through an example for both a situation for speculation and both a situation for hedging to show you guys how exactly you can use this information to help you not only make money, but also help you protect your money, especially when the market is moving down. Notice that that's kind of been the theme of this week so far. We talked about bonds earlier on Tuesday, and we also talked about that last Thursday, how you can use bonds when the market goes down to protect your risk. Options are kind of the same way, except you also have on the other side the speculation. So let's start off with the speculation call when it comes to the market. And let's do that with, like we said earlier, Apple. So speculation. Let's say, same example from before, prices are at 125. We think they're going to 135 by, let's call it August 20th. That's, the, that's what I want to use because that'll pretty much give us almost the end of the summer. So we have the entire summer to let this position play out. So let's say we thought it was going to 135. So the first thing we need to do, we need to come over here to our strike prices. And we need to find 135, of course, because that's where we think the price is going to go to. Remember what Darren told you. The strike price gives you the right to buy 
these options right here at that price. at the price of one thirty five. Oh, and not to bump in, uh, to jump in and interrupt, but I want you guys to kind of look and see what Tiberius is doing. The way you kind of use these options and and knowing how to read these options is two ways you can do it. One of the ways that Tiberius is doing this is an implied uh, method or a implied volatility, which means he's looking at what the market is giving him right now. And another way that uh, looking at it right now and seeing what areas have either been uh, resistance or support, and he's using that and implying this uh, method on what prices uh, it's been struggling at, what price it's been staying at for some time, what's the all-time high, what's the all-time low. Those are the implied right now. Another way he's going to show you, too, is the historical, what we've always done. We've looked at it from a monthly, weekly, daily perspective. The way he's going to continue to break it down, he's going to be using historical data as well. So mind you, he's using both these method, historical and applied methods, to break down what is the best price to enter into these option trades. You have to know what specifically you're doing or what you're doing to pretty much know what, how do you say, know exactly what you're doing, so to say, like, in order for you to know what's the best price to get into, you have to look at your past and what the market is giving you for the present time. So that's what I pretty much wanted to say because you were doing such a good job. But go ahead with your 135, I think. So... If you thought that prices were going to go to 135, then you would say, okay, let me find my strike price. So we were saying earlier, the strike price gives you the ability to buy the stock at this price. So imagine that the stock was at $140. Somebody is giving you an opportunity to buy it at 135. So then when you exercise your option, you can sell them in the market at 140. You had the right to buy them for 135. So that's how you would play it when you were looking for your strike price. But you also have to remember that anything that you do in the market always has a price associated with it. So don't think that 135, once prices hit that level, that you're making profit. That's not true. Not quite yet. You also have to factor in the cost of the premium, which is basically the fancy way of saying how much did your option cost? So if we wanted to buy this 135 option, we have to look at the price. What's the price right here? The price is 250, right? So remember, that's the price per share. So multiply that by 100 to actually get the real price to buy the option, $252. But for the sake of figuring out where we need to actually get the price to go to to break even, luckily, Robinhood gives you a, a column that lets you actually calculate that number. But for platforms that don't, you just add how much your option costs on top of the strike price. And then you need prices to break that level for you to make money. So that's how you speculate with options right there. Or let's say you didn't want to do the 135 because you said, man, it has to go to 137 for me to make money. I think it's going to 135. So now you have to scroll through this break even column, find numbers that are below the price that you want. So the best option we can get is 134, right? In terms of break even levels. So we would probably look for the $130 option strike price excuse me strike price of 130 expiring august the 20th for a price of four dollars and five cents we would need it to break 134 to make profit and that right there is pretty much how you would use options for a speculation purpose now in terms of hedging which is basically the financial term that means that you want to protect your risk you can look at the put side so remember how i told you that in order to hedge you have to already be a speculator and already own something so in this scenario, we're going to say that we own 100 shares of stock. So, and we're only saying that because remember what a stock uh, a option represents. A option represents 100 shares. So we want to make sure that the stock that we're hedging is also the same amount. So if we have 100 shares of Apple, let's say we bought them at 126. Multiply that. So bring up your calculators. Do that. And that should give you about 12,600. That's how much our total, our, our total stock is worth. Keep that number in your head, 12,600. That'll be very important to determine what type of option we want to get. Because when you're buying a put option, 
you're protecting yourself just in case the market goes down. So let's flash back over to the chart. This is where the technical analysis part comes in. You want to make sure that you have your option at a level that lines up with what used to be a demand zone or somewhere down below at support. So we, we can see that Apple for the short term has been in a little bit of a down movement. We may, uh, I will say this is a lower high. So you have the potential to come back down to 122, 122.50. So you would say as a person who owns the stock, I believe in Apple long term, but I don't want to sell it because tax things, you know, I might have to pay extra taxes if I don't hold it for a certain amount of time, or I just don't want to sell my position at all. I just want to protect myself somehow, some way. So in order to do that, you buy the put option with the area down here towards the strike price of 122. So you flash back over to the options chart and then you find that. So remember, we're still doing it for August 20th. So let's find 122. The best we can get is 120. The closest we can get is a strike price of about 130. That's the closest we can get without going over. Our break even price would be 121. So let's actually do 135 because that'll give us 122.77 right around our number. Now, what you want to take into consideration is how much that options cost. Because best case scenario, Apple continues to go up. Remember that buying puts when you're hedging is only to protect your money. You don't want that put to actually make money because you want the stock to go up. But if the stock does go down, you got that protection. So best case scenario, this should always expire worthless because an option, a put option that expires when prices go up doesn't make any money. So this right here would be the cost for your insurance. For your, you might want to. My position is only twelve thousand dollars and six twelve thousand six hundred dollars. This option costs one thousand two hundred twenty-three. That's almost ten percent of the total value for my stock that I own. If I lose that, that's a big loss. So now you have to crunch the numbers and say, how much does the stock need to go up in order for me to make money and recover back what I lost from the put? If those numbers don't add up, then you can't do it from that strike price, and you find something better. So you might be better off trade in a 110 put option for a price of 161 and just buying more of these or whichever one of these options work the best for you. So that right there and is, is an example of how you hedge. But when you hedge, it's just one more thing you need to really take into consideration. You need to also remember that sometimes the value of your hedge might not cover the full value for the losses that you take. So let's look at Apple stock price today. Apple. Okay, so we look at Apple. Apple was down one dollar and fifty-seven cents. Remember, we said we had a hundred sh shares. So we just do that math real quick. A hundred shares times a dollar fifty-seven. It's one hundred fifty-seven dollars that we lost. So if we have a put option, we would want that put option.